Uh, so what I want to do is start out with a topic that's extremely important for, uh, for calculus as well. And it's a pretty deep topic, okay? I'm going to spend like three days on it, okay? It's got a lot of concepts. I'll be very uh, honest with you. I'd say that Chapter 5 is probably one of the harder ones, okay? Uh, one of the reasons is that it takes in a lot of concepts and trig, and it ties everything together. And if you have not tied it together, it's going to be a house of cards that's going to crash, okay? Because you haven't got all the concepts together, okay? So you really want to be attentive uh, and understand what we're going to be doing. The key concepts that come into play here are all students take calculus, friends table, reference angle. If you are weak in any one of those three areas, and of course, fractions, okay? If you're fractionally challenged, then you're challenged, okay? But the other three topics, if you are not very solid with it, this is going to prove to be difficult, okay? So I'm giving you a heads up. I'm not trying to discourage you. All I'm trying to say to you is be serious and focus, okay? Be serious and focus. Are you still recording? Yeah. So the first thing that I want to do is to show you that trig equations can have an infinite number of solutions. Unlike linear equations, linear equations, how many solutions? One. Quadratic? Two. Uh, cubic? Three. Point three. So a finite number of solutions. Trig equations are nasty. They can have infinite number of solutions, okay? Yeah, they can have four, they can even have eight, ten, twelve, whatever. Huge number of solutions, okay? So you've got to worry about all the details in there. So first of all, this guy is an equation because it's got an equal sign. It's a trig equation because there's a trig function in there, okay? And so my claim to you is that this dude's got an infinite number of solutions. The way we're going to do that is by showing, putting it in a graph like so, okay? Put that in your end box. Make sure your graphing calculator is in radian mode, graphing calculator. If you don't have it, then you are... Sorry? So you have to no. It burnt out. How does a calculator burn out? Were you smoking? Oh. Uh, make sure your mode is radian. And the windows that you want are like so. So your graph should look like this. How can you tell that you've got an infinite number of solutions here? Sorry? Yeah, and how do, what is the solution here? How would you find the solution if I were to ask you to use a graphing calculator to find a solution? What would you do? How would you do it? What would you do? What would you do on your graphing calculator to find out where it's crossing the x-axis? Sorry? Second calc? Zero, okay? So you can see that this graph is going through the x-axis so many times, you can conclude that it's got an infinite number of solutions, okay? You can actually solve this equation without a calculator. Just by having friends is half a friendly number. Which angle has a sign of a half? Sorry? Speak radians. Pi over 6, everybody there? Pi over 6? Yeah. Is that the only angle that has a sign of a half? Sorry? Pi over 3 would be root 3 over 2. So you messed up your friends, dude. Any others? Pi over 6, any others? Okay. Again, like I keep telling you that if your knowledge on all, st all students take calculus, friends table, and all that stuff is built on house of cards, things are going to collapse. They're going to collapse. All students take calculus. Sign is positive in which two quadrants? One and two. There and there. Your friends table tells you that this angle is pi over six. It tells you that this angle is pi over six. But that's not the angle you want. The angle is always measured with respect to the positive x-axis. So it's this angle. And that angle would be 5 pi over 6. So your answers are pi over 6 or 5 pi over 6. 
Is everybody with me on that? Yeah. Okay. So to solve this equation without a calculator, you've got to dig into all students' take calculus, friends' table, reference angle. Okay. All right. Question. Again, the answers cannot be in uh, answers cannot be negative. You're looking at positive answers only. Yeah, but that doesn't mean the angle is ne negative. Sine theta is negative half means sine theta is a half, right? If you move the half over. Yeah, see what I mean by how's the cards? It's going to collapse. Yes. Sign inverse can be, yeah, yeah. Keep them straight, man. Inverses and yeah. I'm telling you, man, I'm really serious. The trig is really nasty, man. It's got so many details in there. You got a, a gap somewhere. Things are just going to flow through. Okay, it's pretty deep. Okay, so you can see from the answer here that I got my pi over 6 and I got my 5 pi over 6. Where do you think the 2 and pi crap's coming from? Wow, wow, wow. That's right. What's the period of this function? What's the period of sine theta? 2 pi. So if it happens at pi over 6, it's going to happen at pi over 6 plus 2 pi. And then it's going to happen again at another 2 pi. And then again at another 2 pi. That's what this statement is telling you, and similarly that one. It's happening at 5 pi over 6. It's going to happen again at 5 pi over 6 plus 2 pi. Well, we're not going to look at negative angles right now, but yeah, you would get minus as well. Yeah. yeah. So this would really be, so n is, see so if you notice this, it says n is an integer. That's 